To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliances, visit www.alliances.com. That's right. So you know, again, the only place to go to is alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. The only place where entrepreneurs align. That's right. And as you know, you can check out past episodes. We'll also have this episode recorded where you can go back. And I promise you, you're going to want to go back and listen to the details of that. Why? Because I have with us Ziad Aldenor. He is the founder and president and CEO of Black Hawk Partners. You can reach him at blackhawkpartners.com. He's also on the list of the 500 most influential CEOs. And boy, has he got a lot of information to share. So again, too, and those of you that may be watching live, feel free to ask your questions and message right in, and we'll do our best to get through as many as we can. So Ziad, welcome to the show. First of all, I was welcome back to the show because we've had you on before and um, very popular episodes. Thank you for having me, uh, David. All right, so I wanna jump right in. I'm gonna just say a key word and I want you to tell me what comes to mind when I say this key word, okay? The key word is politics. Politics. Tell me what politics means to you. Politics is power. That's the first word that comes to it. People go into politics for power. And through that gate, they hope to make more money, uh, whether they stay in politics or after politics. Look at all of them who went there, from Barack Obama to Nancy Pelosi to Joe Biden, the Biden family. They all made money. The only guy who lost money in politics was Donald Trump. It cost him a lot of money. Uh, I'm not taking sides. This is facts. These are facts. Politics is power, which leads to money, writing books, uh, appearances, videos, and the like. So that's the first word that comes to mind. Well, I want to know, though, Ziad, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but politicians are allowed to have inside information in regards to companies and buying stock. Yeah. Yet, what, yet, yet if we did that as the public, what would happen? You know, if you if we did everything as a public, uh, you know, the politicians can lie, we cannot lie. Uh, the politicians can get inside information, we cannot. It's an elite group of people who got to power and who use power very well. They are masters at the power game. Uh, most people are not, are very naive about it. Most people are sheep. These are the politicians in power, they're not sheep, they lead. They lead by doing things that you don't know even about. Uh, they don't care if you know or not. They don't care about your prosperity or not. All what they care about is get to power, make money, enrich themselves, and get more power. Power, as Henry Kissinger used to say, is the biggest aphrodisiac. You know, once you get to power, it's tough to leave that, that position. And um, that's what happens. So there are definitely double standards and more. And this is not about to change. It's always been like this throughout history, from the Roman Empire back to now. A a every country, every generation, it's more, uh, power is more subtle in the United States, although now it's been very much exposed. Uh, than other countries, where in other countries it's blatant. And it's becoming very much blatant in here too. So that's the, these are the facts. Now, you're a world traveler in that. Is there anywhere else that has, I mean, is there any government that, you know, that in regards to politics that is uh, even killed or whatever the word may be of, of for the people, by the people? No. There is no such thing. Uh, this is what government are, is here to govern. And they govern through the use of power. Uh, it's a uh, wishful thinking to have it for the people, by the people. Of course, it's more accentuated in some places than others. But, uh, you know, this is what uh, the politicians all about. 
um, there are some countries whereby it's so extreme, the power. I mean, give you an example to my homeland, Lebanon. Uh, people made not millions, but tens of billions of dollars by stealing the public, by cheating the people. Uh, you know, you know, every grant they get, they put it in their pockets. Uh, it's much more than inside information. It's to the extreme. I mean, you have some people in power who accumulated there like uh, 15 to 20 billion dollars. So it's much more uh, accentuated than in the US. Here you have some degree of checks and balances. There you have zero checks and balances. They are the government, they make the laws, they do whatever they want, and no one can stop them. And not just the Lebanon. I mean, you look at uh, most of the Middle East, a lot of the uh, countries in South America, in Asia, etc. different shades of power, different degrees, but power is power. As George Orwell, you know, used to say, they are for power for the sake of power. Um, and a lot of the people are very naive about it. They don't get it. Yeah, yeah. And again, we're talking with Ziad Abdenor. Uh, BlackHawkPartners.com is where you could reach him. Founder and President Zio of Black Hawk Partners. We'll get into Black Hawk Partners here too, uh, coming up soon here in that. Um, all right, Ziad, uh, uh, next key word that's on everybody's mind also too, with everything going on in the world and that, money. What's money mean to you? Money for me is, free, is about freedom. It's not about acquiring things, flaunting things. Uh, it's freedom. It's freedom to do whatever the hell you want, whenever you want, without being uh, accountable to a boss, a president, a senator, a government. These guys work for us. It's about freedom. My, my, my only boss is money. When I acquire more money, I am freer. I can do what I want as long as you're doing it uh, legally, of course. And uh, that's what it is. It's about freedom. Uh, it's not villain. It's not capitalism. It's not bad. It's not villain. You acquire freedom, prosperity for yourself, your family, your loved ones, your community. And you don't have to take crap from anyone. Money is about freedom. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, this is the ultimate goal, is to be free, is to say what you want, is to do what you feel like doing uh, without any repercussions. It insulates you, it protects you, it makes you accomplish your dreams. Well, you've accumulated a lot of wealth. Mm -hmm. So how do we get rich? Different ways of getting rich. Number one, I mean, this, you know, we need a whole uh, hour at least to talk about that. But I know you don't have an hour. So let me uh, try to summarize it. Number one, you don't make money by yourself. You have to have a team to make money with. Nobody makes money by himself. It takes a village. It takes a community of real smart people around you to assist you in getting to that goal. At the end of the day, you become the average of the six people closest to you. You don't need a Rolodex of 30,000 people. All this uh, networking stuff is very underrated. You don't need 30,000 people like some people on LinkedIn collect uh, like all these contacts. They haven't monetized the contacts. The power is to monetize your contacts. I only work with 50 people but they are really top of the class. You only need this kind of number, this number of people who think alike, who have resources, who have capabilities, uh, who, uh, who will fight for what they believe in, etc. So it takes, a, it takes a small group of people, your SWAT team, to make money. Now, having said that, you have different asset classes. 
whether you're making money in uh, cannabis, Bitcoin, real estate, NFTs, private equity, fintech, you know, you can make money in every single asset class and you have to understand every single asset class. You cannot know it all, but you have experts you're tapping into in those asset classes who are close to you. Uh, my Bitcoin guy writes books on Bitcoins. He wrote the Bible. Stock market, the same thing. Guys like Charles Payne, who is the guru of stock market investing. We just stayed the same. So if you have like 50 people in every single asset class, two or three people in every asset class, you're going to make a lot of money because you have access to intelligence and information that very few people have. And you're dealing with people who already make money. So I don't need to know it all. I need to know all the people, the power brokers in those asset classes who are excelling and making a lot of money. And you can make it big time. So it's all about people. It's all about your attitude towards that. It's all about what your goal is. In a nutshell, I can talk for hours about this, but that's how you really make money. So what's uh, is, uh, yeah, great information. So what would you say would be maybe the one step? We've got a lot of people listening across the board, those that are you know, living paycheck to paycheck to those that are quite well. But what's the one, maybe, what, is, there, is there one step we should do now? Is it find those close people? Number one, number one, stop working for other people. Okay? You will never make money on that. Stop, look, you, reach to, you have to reach a point whereby money works for you. You don't work for money. And for money to work for you, you have to know some have access to some intel that's not known to everyone. look a lot of people don't do research don't work hard they work hard at a job jobs consulting and all that stuff is not scalable so basically you have to be present at your job to make money if you're sick and are not present you're not going to make money you will never make money like this you have to be in a position where you own a business or you own a stake in a business that's make money, that is making money whether you are working there or not. It has to be scalable. Money has to work for you. Uh, you have to have an equity stake in a business. You have to, and, and in a business with people you like and you trust and who are capable and competent. You know, don't panic if you don't have a job. A lot of people, Oh, you know, I, I, I had this job. Now I'm six months out of a job. There's a gap in my resume. Who gives a shit about the gap? You know, people are paranoid about this because they've been trained all their lives to have jobs. It's all about jobs in America. How many jobs have we created? How many jobs have we lost? It's wrong. Governments are doing the wrong thing. It's not about job creation. It's about... Um, creating an environment that's conducive to wealth creation. You have to think about how do I create wealth? What resources do I have to create wealth? Whether human resources, capital resources, etc. This is, should be your goal. People don't think like this. People think they have to have a salary and a job. You will never create wealth by doing that. Never, ever. Because you're going to have to pay in taxes, you're going to have to work your ass off, and you will never get there. You have to change. I know it's tough to realize, to understand. I know it's tough to do because this, because you're breaking old habits. Old habits die hard. Well, you have to break them to get to the next level. You have to find yourself something you're very good at and go create a business around it. Find something that you're very passionate about and go create a business around it. If you don't have enough money, partner with other people, like-minded people who have the same goals, ambitions, and create that business together. Partner with them, take a piece of it. You don't have to have 100% of the business. You know, 
being a one-man show is not a business. You're still a consultant. You have to create a company with different partners, with different skills and different resources. who are gonna help you build that. One-man show, a lot of guys who are CEO of this, they are a one-man show. You're not CEO of shit. One-man show, don't, don't go anywhere. You have to create a business with the right people, with a, with a very clear-cut goal, something you're passionate about and something you're very good at, no matter what it is. There's no, you know, you don't have to be a, you know, um, top-notch financier to do that. You only have to understand this is the business you like, you want to do. Create a business around it. Create businesses. Stop being dependent on the government for handouts, on corporations for paychecks, and on this and that. You know, today, there are more slaves, corporate slaves, than 200 years ago when you had the plantations. They're corporate slaves. They can't do nothing. I mean, I know people read my blogs here and there on LinkedIn and others. Some of them don't dare putting a like because their boss is not going to like it. I mean, can you imagine a 50-year-old guy who can't express his feeling and put a like on a blog? Is that a thing? This is beyond slavery. And they say, oh, I can't do anything about it. No, you can, but you're a lazy fart who doesn't want to even try and who's keeping the same status quo. As Albert Einstein used to say, insanity is doing the same thing again, over and over again, expecting different results. Right. Well, you want different results and you're doing the same crap all over and you don't want to try and you're afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. Oh, I'm going to be afraid. I'm not going to have that paycheck. Well, you can create much more than a paycheck. You have to go through that exercise to create wealth. If you want to create wealth, not a lot of people want to create wealth. Fine, fine. If you don't want to create wealth, stick to your damn job. Retire at 65. Get Social Security and a pension. And try to live by that. You cannot live by that today. You cannot, especially if you live in high priced cities like New York, Los Angeles, Miami, San Francisco, you know, Houston, etc. Maybe you can live like that in, uh, I don't know, Oklahoma. You know, it's very cheap out there. It's very reasonable. It's very nice. But look, it depends on the lifestyle you want. What kind of lifestyle you want? It's all in your hands. It's all in your control. I don't believe in all this destiny shit or fate or this is my destiny. Uh, Jesus wants this for me, he has ordained this. I shouldn't be a rich, etc. This is all crap. This is all propaganda. The beat is crap. You can do whatever you want to do. But there are sacrifices to, to, uh, to get there. Nobody gets there by, without sacrificing. You're going to have to sacrifice something to get there. Is it worth it? In my experience, it's very much worth it. But in your experience, it may not be worth it. That's fine. It's your decision. Uh, but it's all about freedom. You need to be able to say whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as you're not cheating, stealing anyone. If they don't like it, tough luck. Life is not fair. Get used to it. You know? So it's not like... And all this stuff, oh, you know... Uh, now in the government, we have to lower people's standards so that they feel good. Screw this feel good feeling. Feel good means nothing. We're not going to lower your standards so that other people feel good because they feel inferior to you. Well, you know what, my friend, we're not born equal. We don't live equally. We're not going to die equal. We're not equal. There's people, different skills, different skill sets different experiences, etc. You want to create equal opportunities. Yes, this I agree. But we're not born equal and we're not going to lower everybody's standards so that we feel equal and we feel good. It's not a question of feeling. This is the problem in America today. Everybody has to feel good. Sometimes, you know, it's like in school, etc. They don't want to reward the winner. They want to give a lollipop to every kid so that they all feel good and equal. This is bullshit. 
total bullshit because sometimes you have to feel like shit to bounce back and and prove yourself look at steve jobs they fired him from apple he came back to the board fired them all and created a trillion dollar company right because right. because they let him feel bad look what had, it has created another effect you know so that he can really bounce back and came back in force sometimes you have to go to hell to bounce back and feel hey i am really this is what i've made of you, you have to test your limits you have to go through hell sometimes there's nothing wrong in that people are afraid of that they want the status quo and then they expect change they expect to well it's it's total bullshit and i blame a lot you know the parents who haven't taught their kids this and who want security there's no such thing as security by the way there's no secure job there's no secure anything you make it all in your own hands either i blame the parents or i blame the principals the teachers the school they went to or the people they 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 are with around a lot of losers around when they see you very successful they want to pull you down they start gossiping who gives a shit about their gossip about what your parents say sometimes they don't understand shit your parents or the principles you have to create your own world this is what i want and you can only do that by knowing your dna i know my dna you know i'm not perfect but i know what i'm really good at and i go and i do it i don't care what people think or what people are going to say as long as i'm happy and as long as i'm achieving what is that i don't do that but I, i'm not running for office i'm not interested in politics i'm interested in creating wealth i'm interested in empowering people success is all about empowering people success is all about working with the right team that will empower you and vice versa it's time to wake up if not you know you're going nowhere nowhere and stop listening to all these people you know in government and this and that do exactly the reverse what the government will tell you exactly the reverse and you'll be very happy create your own world your own self your own self esteem your own team your own swan team etc read a lot read read people don't read anymore they go and look at tiktok and they want to make money they don't read shit they know nothing i saw some interviews of people asking them basic question about uh when did the united states get, get independent or who's the vice president they can't even answer these basic question all this generation z x i don't know what the hell it's it's called you know they know nothing about nothing and and they expect to make money they expect freedom they expect wealth they expect self esteem they expect what do they expect I mean it's I can talk for hours David but it is so pathetic it's so pathetic it's beyond pathetic and you know what it's people's fault you can blame it blame it on this blame it on that blame yourself you know attack yourself be very critical of yourself and stop comparing yourself with others so oh he's better than me and you know they see uh, you know uh, a good car a, a guy on instagram with a good car they start being jealous about it there's nothing to be jealous right. about right. try to use it as a role model i want to be like him what did he do research that do the effort it's a lot of work it's a lot of work and only the people who are willing to have the attitude take the work get it done and you know what what i say having attitude is not being arrogant There's a big difference between being arrogant and being confident. You know, uh, there's a fine line between the two. Be assertive, be confident, do your homework, surround yourself with the right people, acquire a discipline. I mean, there's a zillion items, and I'm sure deep inside a lot of people know that, but they don't do it. There's no need if, if you know that. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Okay, if you're so smart and you know it, so start doing it. because you know you can know you can accumulate all this knowledge and not doing it at the end of the day is getting the right intel 
is getting the right information and acting upon it. It's all about actionable intelligence. Without actionable intelligence, you're going nowhere. People don't act on this. They, they act on feelings, emotions, shooting by the hip, being cool. You know, this doesn't work. Establish your own domain, your own credibility. They will listen to you. I can talk for hours, but you know, I'm giving you exactly the basics of what it takes to acquire wealth, power, credibility, respect with people and with yourself. No, I mean, you know, <clears throat> phenomenal information. And you've done so much too, Ziad. In fact, you're watching, listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. So make sure that you go to alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. We will also have the link posted for this because as you heard, you're going to want to make sure that you listen to this interview again a few more times than that. Um, you know, Ziad, you've, you've backed 125, over 125 companies and serial entrepreneurs uh, worth in aggregate, what, over $10 billion in the private equity, high yield bonds distressed debt markets. I mean, you know, you, you've done so much, but see, yeah, where did like, where did you, you know, where did you learn all this? How come, how come the general public just, I mean, you touched on it certainly in that, but how did you find your route? How did you find your path? I mean, where, where did, where did that come from? Where was, you know, if you look back, where was the turning point or the aha moment, which was, yeah, I, I need to do something what others are not doing and then being able to find it and act on it. Well, number one, I come from a family of uh, business people, industrialists, financiers, etc. My father, my uncle, who had a big influence on me, you know. So I come from, a, I have to say, I come from a privileged background. But I didn't use this to get spoiled. I could have been a spoiled kid, but I wanted to emulate them and do better than them. So they were a big influence. A lot of the people who have parents like this or family like that end up in the shit because they start getting lazy and they don't follow through. For me, it was the reverse. Number two, when I started my career on Wall Street, I was lucky to work for one of the biggest financiers in the 20th century, called Michael Milken, was the, who created the junk bond market, was a junk bond czar uh, with Drexel Burden, where we financed billions of dollars for companies who didn't have access to capital. So other than my family, Milken was a big influence on me. And then also, the, the political person who had a huge influence on me was Ronald Reagan. Uh, you know, talking about, you know, the way he talked about it, the way he, he communicated to the public. Uh, I loved his way. Capitalism, freedom, prosperity, America. So these people were a big influence on me. Uh, and I wanted to make a difference. Because at the end of the day, this is what counts, making a difference. We don't, we don't come here to eat, sleep, and you know what. Uh, that's not the thing. We come onto this planet to make a difference. And success is about empowering people. And I learned this very young with my uncle, who uh, went from rags to riches without even a high school diploma, a very skilled, astute trader. So, and he lived a long life, till 91. And when I asked him one day before he passed away, what is success? Could you please define for me success? You've done it all. You've been through all over the place. He told me, you know what? I told him, what is it? Is it about money, power? What is success? When do you reach a point where you say you are successful? He says, look, success is about empowering people. The more people you empower and you inspire, the more you become successful. And this is what I 
I, I, this started when I, when I was around 30 years old. And this was my mantra in life. It's not, you know, it's not like the Wall Street mentality where everybody is trying to screw the other, screw the other one. No. Uh, so basically, I, I want to be in a position, and I was, and this is what I did, to put you on my shoulder so that you reach success before me. And I've empowered tons of people, an entrepreneur, and I'm very direct with them. I tell them what it is. I'm not telling them anything to please them to make them happy. I don't care if they're happy or not. This is the facts. You want to do it? This is what it takes. A lot of people listen to this and end up doing it. And by their success, I became successful. You know, it's all about empowerment. How did I put all the pieces together? Well, it takes years. Overnight success is 15 years. You don't learn this at business school. You don't learn this from your parents. I learned some, I took the bits and pieces from the family, from my parents, from my jobs, from my experience, etc. At the end of the day, you have to be able to do it. You have to be smart enough to put all the pieces together. So this is where I start writing books, putting all these thoughts on paper. Because when you have it on black and white, you know, you start applying it even more. So it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of interaction with people. Uh, some bad experiences, some great experiences, uh, some failures, uh, more successes. Because at the end of the day, failures are, are good. There's no problem with that because you only learn from your failures. You don't learn from your successes. When you're successful, it goes to your head that you're invulnerable. You're so damn smart. No, you have to be humble. You have to take a lot of hits and you have to come back again and say, no, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do it. I found a better mousetrap to do it. And this is what I'm going to do it. So a lot of people give up. They take a couple of hits. Oh, it's not for me. It's not for me. I'm going to go back to Papa or to this company or right. this, etc. No, no, no. You have to be a resilient, uh, tough as nails guy. Who, every time you take a hit, you bounce back stronger than ever. Very few people have this. Very few people. And this is why these very few people are the billionaires. And all the guys who say that. They are relentless. They never give up. They don't give a damn about what you think. They don't give a damn about criticism. They are obstinate, re relentless, resilient, tough as names. And this is what, and they don't teach you this. Look, all these liberal elite colleges, they're here to create robots. Robots in factories. Those who go to Harvard, Stanford, Wharton, I'm a Wharton grad, but I'm not a robot. But the most part, they create robots. Shut the hell up. Take your job, don't criticize, don't challenge, be a nice boy, and in 20 years, you may be somebody. Screw that. And who is that person saying that? Screw you. You know nothing. And, uh, and you have to challenge that. Very few people will not challenge that. They take it like it's coming from the Messiah. You know, these are the words from the Messiah. This is what he said. No, you have to be very critical. And you have to challenge things. You know, if you listen to, if you read the book of The Prince of Machiavelli, Niccolo Machiavelli, you know, who lived 500 years ago, very wise guy, super smart guy. Right? He said, one of the most difficult things in the world is to change the order of things. Why should it be like this? A lot of people don't want to change the order of things. The people who change the order of things are the biggest winners. The people who not only rock the boat, but break the damn boat and build a new one are the biggest winners. The people who challenge the status quo, the government, the powerful people are the winners. I'll give you an example. I treat all people very nicely, very gentlemanly. And I treat the t people at the top, the billionaires, like shit. Because I love to rub the nose of these arrogant people. 
And this is how you get your their respect. Because everybody tells them, oh, yes, doctor, oh, yes, professor, oh, yes, thing, you're smart, you think. Everybody kissing their ass. These guys don't want people to kiss their ass. They want to be challenged. They don't want people to be their doormat. The more you challenge them, the more you're going to get their respect and they want to do business with you. And the more you, you treat them with this reverence, oh, my God, the highness, you know People come and drop names. Oh, I met this, I met that. And who the fuck is he? She's my friend. Who the fuck is he? So what? Because there's a couple of billion dollars because he appeared on TV. Now he's a big shit. He, 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 he's a big guy now. Because he appeared a couple of times on TV. It, it, they, they fueled his ego and he feels good. You have to challenge this shit. If you don't challenge things, you will go nowhere in life. If you don't develop your own opinion, your own backbone, your... Uh, Balls of steel, you won't get anywhere. It's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who you are. What is your DNA? Because if you don't have this, you're not going to attract the right people, the who you know. You're not going to get uh, discipline to learn things. You're nothing. You're dust in the wind. Look, at the end of the people, a lot of people are, are worried about if they are loved or hated. Right. I don't, care. I don't care if the people hate me, because at the end of the day, once they get to really know me and know my character, they're going to love me. And it's happened a lot of times. You know the worst thing? It's not love or hate. It's fine. You have to take love as much as hate. is indifference. When people are indifferent to you, you're like dust in the wind. You don't even exist. Like a lot of bosses treat their employees or politicians, etc. This is the worst. You don't want to be, ever be different people you know you, you can't you can't this is the case of death and in order to be indifferent you have to bust up you have to challenge them you have to do things that nobody thought you would do as long as it's all legal and good you can do whatever you want or i use the effort oh my god i offended your feeling like i give a shit about your feeling no, I offended his feeling. He's going to start crying. Oh, my God. He's going to accuse Papa. He's rude. Ziad is rude. I like, I care. You know, I'm trying to make you a better person, you idiot. And all what you're telling me is that you have affected my feelings. You know, this is the people who have all these, uh, you know, unbelievable feelings will never succeed. It takes to be, you know, it's a rough and tumble world out there. It's a very tough world out there. You can't cry at every opportunity. If you lose something, you start crying. You have now. You need a safe place or a safe room to 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 de-stress. This is insanity. I mean, you know, today is like it's all about style. No more substance. I want to know what's in your gut. I want to know what makes you tick. I don't care, you know, style. Over, I love his hair. I love. It. His suit, I love you. Who gives a shit about that? This is all very deceiving. People look at the surface only. They never look at inside the person. What is what is really who is really this person? And this is how I vet uh, people when I work with them. I push their limits. I piss them off, and see how they react. The best way to know people, to get to know people, is to by pissing them off and see how they react, and see if their brain is bigger than their ego, or their ego is bigger than their brain. And I discuss it intensely in my last book, Startup Saboteurs, and the subtitle of the book is How Ego, Incompetence, and Small Thinking Prevent Wealth Creation. It's exactly right. Most people never attain wealth and make money, real money, because they have a big ego, they are, uh, you know, small thinking. They don't think big, and they're incompetent. The, this is this is it. This is the reason. And mostly ego. It's all about ego. Everybody wants to prove himself that you know he's smarter than the other. You don't have to prove. People want to talk much more. They want to listen. They want to talk and hear themselves. Much more. They want to listen. Listen. Just listen, you idiot. And once you have acquired enough experience, then you can talk.
then you can share. Then you can talk sense, not talk, oh, like, you know, like so you go to an event, this idiot wants to show everybody that he went to Harvard Business School. Like what? Now, important? It makes you an idiot. You know, power does not roar. Power is hidden. And people with real power don't roar. The others know who are the powerful people. You don't have to talk and brag and be King Kong or Superman, you know. I went to Harvard, I did this, I did. No, the best bragging is when people brag about you, not you brag about yourself. This is not taught anywhere. They're all bragging, they're all power, they're all talking nonstop, giving their stupid opinion of people who have zero experience in anything, who have never suffered a setback in their life. It's so pathetic. And people listen, and, and you know, and the circus goes on and on and on. But this is why these people get nowhere. They will never be wealthy. And I'm telling you, this is how all the billionaires think. They don't maybe say it the way I am, because for them, they have to protect this information. I don't. I need to share it with everybody. I need to empower everybody. I'm very secure with myself. Whether people like what I'm saying or not, I don't give a rat's ass. This is the truth. You want to make real money, you, 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 you listen to what I'm saying. And you will see, 10 years from now, and I had a lot of people, by the way, I could have been doing this for a long time. They come in here, oh, Ziad. Oh my God, you know, I meet them out of the, on the street and bars and restaurants and things and that. Oh, I use the, so yes, I go, you know what? I followed your advice 10 years ago. You are so right. This is the biggest satisfaction. I, I really inspired and empowered somebody to be really important. This is success. For God's sake, it's not how much money I made. Whether I made a hundred million or a billion dollars, it's not this. This is success. You've transformed an individual transformed his life, he will never forget that. He will basically uh, teach his kids and grandkids that. This is empowerment, this human being, this is about love, uh, this is about support, this is about, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's very deep. And these things are not taught anymore. They're not discussed. You can't talk about these things. It's and uh, that's very sad. I mean, I remember 10 years ago, when you watch TV, etc., you, you had a lot of intellectuals, like Milton Friedman, Ben Hayek, you know, all these guys, really brains, talk about wealth creation, opportunities, capitalism, freedom, all this kind of stuff. I listen sometimes to their videos of 10 years, 15 years ago. Today, you have no intellectuals anymore. You have the, uh, it's very, it's very political, very divisive, very, uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of hatred. The only guys who make some sense are the talk shows like Dr. Tucker Carlson, you know, smart, conservative guy, but he's a talk show. He's not an intellectual, you know, I mean, he is an intellectual to a certain extent, but you know what I mean? I mean, uh, but nobody's talking about this. It's all about they hate each other, they want to screw each other, they want to, I mean, what is this culture? And this is why you have uh, America's demise. So unless there is a really turn in um, the shape of events, I mean, you know, we're going down the drain. Because the most important capital you have is human assets. In any company, your assets go down the elevator every day, in any government, in any country, human assets, human capital. And if you don't train them right, educate them, empower them right, you're doomed. You are doomed. You're going down the drain. No matter how beautiful your country is, no matter what you say you are. I cannot stress the, emphasize the importance of this. And, uh, I think a lot of people are waking up to that, but not enough. 
and um, you know it is it's very sad you know zia this is i've done 1400 plus interviews this is the first and only interview that i kept so quiet and listening to every word and we've got a lot of messages coming in i'm getting a number of texts i want to make sure we get through some of these so go ahead, again, please, go ahead. I, uh, sometimes I, I embark and talk too much no this is, i mean but this is this is information that we need to know and we've got again a number of comments all right one here says um you talked about reading books and that instead of using social media so what books do you recommend someone starts with well start with my two books i mean i don't want to sound self-serving but it's true because my two books are based on reading over i've read in my life over a thousand books and i read a book every two weeks every 10 days i finish a book i'm into speed Start with my two books i'm not promoting the books really i don't care but i think it will show you a lot one of them is called you can both you can find both of them on uh, Amazon. Economic Warfare. Uh, it was published in 2012. I sold 200,000 copies, and the other one is called Startup Saboteurs. But then, you know, I mean, there's tons of books written by. I mean, look, I I, I tell you the kind of books I read most, okay, and I, I and I focus on that. Okay. Mostly, I read biographies. I read around like 300 biographies. Every single political business leader, whether from the right, from the left, dictators, fascists, from Winston Churchill to uh, Adolf Hitler. To, I'm telling you, I'm saying it to everybody. Every single, to Bill Gates, to Steve Jobs, business, politics, finance, global, to uh, Gandhi. I read all these books. And you know what? You learn something from every book. At the end of the day, it's like I have 300 lives. Because in every reaction, I could react based on the experience and the book that I've read. You know, Winston Churchill would have said that. Ronald Reagan would have said that. Joseph Stalin would have said that. You know, once you accumulate this wealth of of reading and experience it's like you've lived their lives you're not only one life you are 300 lives into one you know reincarnated into one that's very powerful because you can tackle any subject anywhere anytime this is what i focus on i don't read fiction bullshit i don't read well this is all this is all a waste of time you know things you read on the beach you know to relax screw that it's a waste of time. I read things of substance written about or by people who are game changers. Who are the game changers? What did they do? How did they leave a mark, etc. Because that's how I am. I want to leave a mark. I want to learn from them. They went before me in life. So you know what? It's like, I mean, it's like I want to live like a thousand years ago. It's like I, I was living there or 200 years ago or 50 years ago. That's very powerful. Trust me. This is the kind of books I read. Uh, next question we got from someone who's watching. Uh, they want to know what the picture is behind you. It's a uh, <laughs> funny. It's uh, uh, the picture of the home I have in England. You know, so. I took it there, put it in art, you know, horses, old houses, cottage, you know. You talked about education, and I want to make sure we get this in, and Harvard, yet you got an MBA from Wharton School of Business yeah. with honors and yeah. that, uh, uh, bachelor's from American University of Beirut, uh, you yeah. know, but yet you mentioned about, you know, those saying, well, I went to Harvard and that, so explain. Well, I just went just to prove to myself that I can do it. These guys consider all oh, they are the elite. They went into work in Harvard, I believe. Okay, I can do it too. Did I learn much? No. No, I was not impressed by the professors, either the best elite colleges, but I made a lot of contacts. The team, you remember? The team, 
the SWAT team. This is how I gathered a lot of my guys on the team because these guys are very competitive, are very smart, have been carefully chosen, and I picked up from there. It's because of the people I met, not because of what they're going to teach me. What are they going to teach me? How to read the balance sheet? Big deal. You see that? Right. Look, 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 look. There are a lot of... If you want to be unstoppable, you have to be able to do two things very well. The rest is bullshit. The rest is done by the crowd, and they don't know nothing. You have to be able to move people, and you have to be able to move money. This is where, where your pulse should be. If you can move people to work with you, for you, whatever, the right people, and move money, your money, their money, etc., you're unstoppable. Everybody in the world works for people who can move people or money. Everybody. They're all robots. They process stuff. They crunch numbers. They work for the people who can move money or people. If you want to tell me this is, this is a secret, this is the biggest challenge. If, you're not, if you don't get there, you're never going to be really well. Because you're surrounded with a bunch of losers, idiots, and you don't have any money and you cannot access any money. All these people can go on the street, bitch and moan and cry and get government hands out and, and die for a cause going to a stupid war. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm helping America and you're dying, you idiot. All these people are a waste of time, are wasting their times and their lives. You have to be able to get to that position. Then you can empower more people to move money and people. Then you can create a better world. Then you can really define the future. All right, so Ziad, with the time that we have left, and we only have a couple minutes here left, and, and uh, I think it's an important question too, is as a parent, and parents that are listening out there, what can we do to instill the rights with in our I'm sorry, you're coming through. Yeah. yeah, what can we I, do I, as I'm parents? I'm sorry, you, you're interrupted. Great. Parents? Yes, what can parents do to be able to instill the right values in their children that are surrounded by TV, TikTok, uh, various perhaps professors, and, and that influences from friends, how can and what can parents do to teach their children to be able to be on their own, be successful, and at the end of the day, Ziad, right, be happy? Look, at the end of the day, you have to be very tough with your kids. You know, there's no such thing as being uh, nice because I want the kid to love me. I remember when my kid, eldest kid, was 12 years old, and my youngest one was 10. Nine. Uh, I used to travel a lot to, to the south of France to relax, you know. And uh, there, you know, I didn't read a beach book. I, I was reading the Wall Street Journal. So I started having my kid, my eldest kid, read the Wall Street Journal. He was telling me, are you nuts? He's 12 years old. I thought, no, 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 no. I'm not nuts. I want to train him for the future. A lot of people, parents, want to... Uh, protect their kids by shielding them from bad information, etc. That's not the way to do it. You don't shield kids. You cannot shield them. You cannot protect them. You have to arm them. You have to give them the ammunition for life to arm them. My kid now is a super Wall Street trader. He started at 12 reading the Wall Street Journal. I armed him. I didn't really listen to what other people or so. I don't give a shit about what they think. A lot of people stop protecting and being overprotective, especially the mothers. Arm them for life. Give them the ammunition. Let them face reality and then teach them. You have to have more influence than, your, than the teacher, than anyone. Unfortunately, most people, most parents don't have the time. They buried in their stupid, pathetic job, nine to five job and they don't teach them anything, and they don't spend enough time with them. And when they spend enough time with them, it's all about love and caring, and you're the best, and your hands are hard, etc. Don't overindulge by telling them all these things. 
because by the time they are 18 or 20 or 25, they think they are so special. There's nothing special in them, in your kids, until they prove it. Nothing. It's all about the love of a mother or a father. You're so special, you're so smart. He's a book, a good player of this, of that. Then stop this shit. Stop this. Arm them, encourage them, and be a greater influence on them than anybody who will tell them anything. I will tell you, when I was really young, David, you know, I went there, and I was not always young, you know, when my kids were young. I went there one day and I saw a drawing of my son. Dad, I'm proud of you. I didn't tell him to draw anything. It was me holding the earth. The earth, this is the impression he had on me. I controlled the damn earth because of the principles I gave him, because of the strength. Strength is love. You don't have to go and melt down every time you talk to them. You don't have to be so soft when you talk to them because you're afraid of uh, offending them, their feelings. This is bullshit. Make him a man or woman. Make him stand for himself or her. Make him sure of that. Be a bigger influence. When you speak, make sure that he's not playing with his bullshit uh, smartphone and he's listening to you. Impose yourself. Impose confidence. This is how you're going to screw every teacher who's going to try to derail him from that. Because it's war. They want to own your kids or you want to own them. Who's going to own them? It's war. It's like in business. Don't, don't think otherwise. Don't think people want to the good for your kids. They don't give a damn about your kids. They want power, money, and control. And now it's proven that they, this is what they want to do with kids in the next generation. So you, either you prevail or they prevail. And you're not going to prevail by being the soft, nice, touchy mom. Oh, my kid is the feel like this. My kid is so smart, so super. He hasn't proven he's so smart yet. He has to prove himself in life. If you do that, they're going to come to life very weak. And they're going to crumble. First problem. Well, Ziad, well said. Wow. We it's certainly power. Have... It's power. It's power. Act with power, act with confidence, act with strength, be fearless, teach that to your kid, do that with your clients, stop this, uh, uh, you know, walk mentality, this bullshit stuff, stop this, stop this, wake up, if not, it's too late, your kids are going to leave you, they're never going to talk to you again, you've not empowered them at all, your, your, your job is about setting a job from 9 to 5, waiting for your social security, and, 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 and taking a vaccine four times a day like an idiot because you're listening to some, some idiot who wants to control you. Nobody gives, okay, bottom line, nobody gives a shit about you. You have to take care of yourself. Nobody gives a shit about you. And if you become so successful, fewer people are going to give a shit about you because they're going to be jealous of you, because they want to bring you down, because they will be happy of that. This is real life. People don't say these things, but it's true. Nobody gives a shit about you. You have to take care of yourself. So stop all these feelings. Stop relying on feelings. I mean, feelings, of course, you have feelings of love, feelings of this, of course. But stop relying on working your life. Be smart. Listen wow. to your feelings, but work your brain. Wow. Well, I'm going to check out your book for sure. Ziad Abdelnour, founder and president and CEO of Blackhawk Partners. Make sure you go to blackhawkpartners.com. He was on the list of the 500 most influential CEOs. What a lot of knowledge. With that, again, you've been watching, listening, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. So make sure you check out our past episodes at alliances.com, E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. Ziad, if we were in person, you know I'd give you a big hug. Awesome. So how was it? Hang on.